Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers obstruction, the right to film police officers, and warrantless arrests, and is brought to us by the Civil Rights Lawyers Channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On August 7, 2020, Deputies Dalton Martin and Jordan Horn of the McDowell County Sheriff's Office in West Virginia approached 66-year-old Donnie Hairston and his 63-year-old wife Ventress while they were sitting on the front porch of the home they rented from former military police officer Jason Tart. The deputies asked the Harristons about four alleged marijuana plants that were found in some overgrown brush at a nearby property owned by a third party, and they both denied any involvement. When the deputies continued to question the Harristons, walk around the property, and look through windows, they called Mr. Tart, who walked over to the Harristons' residence from his nearby home. The interaction that followed was captured on Deputy Martin's body camera. Just because in the season that we're living in, I think it's important that I have your names. What do you mean, ma'am? Um, a lot of crazy stuff, of crazy stuff right. going on. And so having your name makes me feel more secure. As I said, we came here June 28th. You know, we're actually new here. Okay. And for the police officers in this area to come up and say, are you growing marijuana? That is preposterous <laughs> to me. Is just a question, my Yeah, well, I get that. And so then my only question to you is your names, just so it's okay in my own heart and mind. And when I say the season we're living in, you know the season yeah. we're living in. Y'all concerned about something over here at this house? This house? No, that house. Uh, yes. What's the problem? Who lives there? Mr. Ferguson. He's probably there now. He's 79. Okay. All right. What's your name, sir? Jason Tart. Jason Tart. Tart. And what do you mean by the season we're Harrison. living in, ma'am? Uh, sir. What's your? What do you need? <laughs> you got any questions for me? No, I'll just I'll collect some information from you in a minute. Your name and date of birth, and such. What do you need my information for? You, you own these two homes, correct? Mm -hmm. what okay. Do these, these two homes got to do with that. These church? two homes is near that marijuana grow, so I'd just like to have your name. You know how many people go through here? I understand. That's well, not going to do you one bit of good. Okay. Well, sir, I'm, I'm going to need your name and date of birth. And I, I have that. feel comfortable giving you my name and date of birth. Okay, well, this is a criminal investigation. You own these two homes, so by law, you do have to give me your name and date of birth, sir. If he gives you a reason, yes, you do. Reason for what? Yeah. The cause of the marijuana grow. It's not on my property. Okay, well, again, I have reason to believe that these two homes here that you own is related to that marijuana grow. So you have to give me your name and date of birth by law. The deputies inform Mr. Tart that he is required by law to give his name and date of birth. West Virginia does not have a separate stop and identify statute that allows officers to arrest individuals for failing to identify themselves in certain situations. Rather, officers often use the state's obstruction statute to arrest individuals who refuse to identify themselves when they are required to do so. According to Section 61-5-17 of the West Virginia Code, quote, a person who by threats, menaces, acts, or otherwise forcibly or illegally hinders or obstructs or attempts to hinder or obstruct, a law enforcement officer acting in his or her official capacity is guilty of a misdemeanor. In the 2003 case of State v. Sarinsky, the Supreme Court of Appeals of West Virginia held that, quote, refusal to identify oneself to a law enforcement officer does not, standing alone, form the basis for a charge of obstructing a law enforcement officer in performing official duties. However, the court then clarified that, quote, the charge of obstructing an officer may be substantiated when a citizen does not supply identification when required to do so by express statutory direction or when the refusal occurs after a law enforcement officer has communicated the reason why the citizen's name is being sought in relation to the officer's official duties. While the deputies did communicate a reason for requesting Mr. Tart's name by claiming that they needed it due to the proximity of the properties he owned to the alleged marijuana plants, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over West Virginia, determined in the 2021 case of Wingate v. Fulford that the application of a local stop and identify ordinance was unconstitutional, quote, when applied outside the context of a valid investigatory stop, and that, quote, a valid investigatory stop, supported by Terry-level suspicion, is a constitutional prerequisite to enforcing stop and identify statutes. Applying this reasoning, it is likely that a court would find that the deputies could not constitutionally arrest Mr. Tart for refusing to identify himself in this situation. Although
although the case law establishing this was not issued until after this incident occurred. It should also be noted that Mr. Tart did provide his name when the deputies first asked, and because the case law, likewise, does not authorize an arrest for refusing to provide a date of birth, it is likely that a court would conclude that Mr. Tart's conduct did not rise to the level of obstruction. Go get a, go get a pen and piece of paper. Reason to believe what? Why? Because these houses are here? Do you understand that there's a lot of traffic going through here? Since we've lived here, people come up here and they park there and we don't know where the hell they go and then they come back out. I don't have a problem giving you my information. I'm okay, just well that's all I need. What, it doesn't have to be an argument. I mean, just give me your name well, and let it birth, you, dude. It's easy. It's not easy. My property has nothing to do with what you found. Okay. Well, we're, we're just making sure of that. Well, you scared me. I mean, scared who, you? Who says that? Who, By asking you a question? Who, who comes up and asks? That's crazy. And it scared you? I'm trying to understand what It these scared you by me asking you a question. marijuana? And that's a question. <laughs> to say somebody scared you because they asked you a question is ridiculous. That's preposterous. I'm going to give me your name, sir. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait. First name. It's ridiculous to you, sir. Yes, ma'am. But it's not ridiculous to Your first name. You. I'm not giving you my information. Sir, if you refuse to give me your information, I'm going to arrest you. That's why my property has nothing to do with any marijuana whatsoever. You're going to arrest me if I don't give you my name and date of birth. It's obstructing an officer. How? Because you're hindering me from doing my job. You're hindering How me. How am from I doing... hindering you from doing your sir? job if it's not on my property? Last chance to give me your name and date of birth, sir. How am I hindering last, you? Sir, last chance to give me your name and date of birth. How am I hindering you? Place your hands behind your back. Place your hands behind your back. Are you going to give me a name and date of birth? Take me to jail. You're right. I'm hindering you from doing your job. Please. I'll see if I can find you my name first. No, I'm hindering well, you from doing your job. This is really going out off the Yeah, field. this is how you guys... This is bad. This is a, 112 control. This is, this is how you operate. This, this is a wrap. This is I'm hindering you from doing right. your this job. Y'all need to go inside. Again, you two go inside. Go inside. I'm afraid Go inside. Go inside. No, go inside as of right now. Tell me why. Go inside. Tell me what are you doing, Step off the porch. Step off the porch. I'll step off. Go inside. What are you doing? This is unnecessary for Sir, you to be go doing. Go inside. This. He's standing on his own porch. Go inside. Don't come in my hand. Go inside. Step back. Go inside. Look, Thank yeah, you. That, that's completely uncalled for. When Mr. Harrison starts filming the interaction between the deputies and Mr. Tart, Deputy Martin forces the Harristons into their home, pushing Mr. Harrison into his doorway and closing the door behind him, effectively preventing him from continuing to record the encounter. While many federal circuits have acknowledged that the First Amendment protects the right to film the police and the performance of their duties, the Fourth Circuit, which includes West Virginia, has not. In the 2009 case of Zemeski v. Hauk, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals held that an individual's First Amendment right to record police activities on public property was was not clearly established in the circuit. However, because the Zemeski decision did not weigh in on whether such a right existed, the state of the law regarding the right to film the police in the Fourth Circuit has remained unclear. In the 2021 case of Hulbert v. Pope, a U.S. District Court denied qualified immunity to an officer who arrested two individuals in February of 2018 for recording the police on the public sidewalk in front of the Maryland State House. Although parties typically cannot file an appeal until the case has been completely resolved in the lower court, the defendant filed what is known as an interlocutory appeal under Section 1292 of Title 28 of the U.S. Code, which states that, quote, when a district judge, in making in a civil action an order not otherwise appealable, shall be of the opinion that such order involves a controlling question of law as to which there is substantial ground for difference of opinion, and that an immediate appeal from the order may materially advance the ultimate termination of the litigation, he shall so state in writing in such order. The Court of Appeals, which would have jurisdiction of an appeal of such action, may thereupon, in its discretion, permit an appeal to be taken from such order. The defendant's interlocutory appeal to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals argued that the arrest was proper and that video and audio recording of the police was not a so-called clearly established First Amendment right. As of the date of writing this episode, this case is still pending, but when the Fourth Circuit issues a decision, it will hopefully clarify whether the circuit recognizes the right to film the police and the performance of their duties. Until this decision is released, it is difficult to predict how a court would rule on whether Deputy Martin violated Mr. Hairston's First Amendment rights by forcing him to stop filming and if such a right was clearly established at the time of this encounter. Come on. Look, walk. man, don't, don't, walk. don't, don't, walk. don't, listen, listen, Sir, you don't stop. have to, listen, You're man, being recorded. listen, 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 this is, walk. This, listen, walk. listen, walk. listen, walk. listen, walk. listen, walk. listen. I can walk, walk. I can walk okay, without well, you walk. putting your damn hands on walk me, you understand? To the vehicle. I have not broken the law. 
Walk to the vehicle. All. Well, walk to the Don't vehicle, sir. You're being recorded. Hands on me. I give sir. you no reason to touch me. I'm going to arrest you then. Place your hands behind your back. Uncalled for. Place your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Place your hands behind your back. Just listen. Just relax, okay? Listen. You just you, relax. Place your hands okay. behind your back. Please place your hands behind your back. My hand is behind my. Well, place your hands It only takes you. one of you. Place your hands. Look, let him do it. All okay. right. Take your hands okay. off me. That's fine. Okay. Let him do it. Let's walk this way. Deputy Martin initiates an arrest against Mr. Tart on the porch by ordering him to place his hands behind his back. He then orders him to step down, and Deputy Horn handcuffs and arrests him in the driveway area immediately in front of the home. In general, the Supreme Court has long recognized that the land immediately surrounding and associated with the home, known as the curtilage, is considered part of the home itself for Fourth Amendment purposes. The court held in the 2021 case of Longa v. California that without other exigent circumstances, the pursuit of a a fleeing misdemeanor suspect does not justify an officer's warrantless entry into a home or its curtilage. Further, in the 2018 case of Collins versus Virginia, the court concluded that, quote, when a law enforcement officer physically intrudes on the curtilage to gather evidence, a search within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment has occurred. Such conduct, thus, is presumptively unreasonable absent a warrant. Based on this precedent, it would seem that officers cannot arrest an individual in the curtilage of their home absent exigent circumstances justifying the intrusion. However, in the 1976 case of United States v. Watson, the Supreme Court held that the warrantless arrest of an individual in a public place upon probable cause did not violate the Fourth Amendment. And later that year, the court decided in the case of United States v. Santana that the front door of an individual's home was considered a so-called public place for the purposes of the Fourth Amendment. In reaching this conclusion, the court reasoned that, quote, while it may be true that under the law of property, the threshold of one's dwelling is private, it, as is the yard surrounding the house, it is clear that under the cases interpreting the Fourth Amendment, Santana was in a public place. What a person knowingly exposes to the public, even in his own house or office, is not a subject of Fourth Amendment protection. Relying heavily on this case, in the 2003 case of United States versus Hagerman, the United States District Court in the Western District of Virginia, which is part of the Fourth Circuit, upheld the warrantless arrest of an individual on his lawn when an officer told him to come down from his porch and arrested him once he came into the yard. Citing the Santana decision, the court determined that because the defendant emerged from his home onto the porch voluntarily and the officer, without drawing a weapon, asked him to come down to the lawn, the warrantless arrest was valid. Notably, the Santana and Hagerman cases were both decided well before Longa v. California and Collins v. Virginia. So it is possible that a court would conclude that Mr. Tart could not be constitutionally arrested without a warrant on the porch or the yard of his property based on this present. However, because the Long case involved an entry to a garage rather than a yard or porch, and the Collins case involved a search rather than a seizure, it is also possible that a court would distinguish this situation from those decisions and hold that the location of Mr. Tart's arrest did not violate the Fourth Amendment. Ten four. he owns two properties right here on this fabulous drive road. We locate a marijuana grow, probably not 100 foot, 50 foot from this last property of his, and he just won't give us his name, date of birth. Ten four. he's a white male, black male. Black male. After placing Mr. Tart in the back of the police cruiser and radioing in his arrest, Deputy Martin gathered the alleged marijuana plants and placed them in the trunk of the vehicle, presumably to take to the station as evidence. Mr. Tart was charged with obstruction of a law enforcement officer, but the case was dismissed by the prosecuting attorney on October 28, 2020, because Deputy Martin failed to appear in court. On August 9, 2022, Mr. Tart and the Harrisons filed a federal lawsuit against the deputies, and as of the date of writing this episode, the case is still pending. Overall, Deputy Martin and Deputy Horn get an F for maintaining a hostile and aggressive demeanor throughout the encounter, arresting Mr. Tart for refusing to provide his name when he had already provided it, and preventing Mr. Hairston from filming their arrest of Mr. Tart by forcing him into his own home when there were clearly no safety concerns. Although it is possible that the officers will be granted qualified immunity for at least some of their actions in this encounter, it is important to note that this does not mean they behaved professionally, or even that they did not violate Mr. Tart's or the Hairston's constitutional 
constitutional rights. It should not be forgotten that the deputies' behavior towards the Harrisons caused them to fear for their safety, and the deputies' failure to demonstrate any empathy or understanding as to why the Harrisons might feel that way can only be characterized as a willful refusal to acknowledge the realities of the current state of police-citizen relations. Mr. Tart and the Harrisons get an A for remaining relatively calm and polite throughout the encounter, attempting to exercise their constitutional rights, and taking appropriate legal action after the interaction. While issues of qualified immunity may pose difficulties in their pending litigation against the deputies, I commend Mr. Tart and the Harrisons for having the courage to initiate a lawsuit after having their rights infringed upon. And it will be interesting to see how all of the legal issues involved are resolved. I would also like to acknowledge Mr. Tart in particular for his willingness to be arrested for standing up for the Constitution and the protections it grants him. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.